this is Sean with Gate City Foundation Drainage. We're on a job today in Greensboro. So let me show you what we've got going on here. So we've got this house and the crawl space has been flooding. And so they've already got a Schedule 30 drainage system in here, a pipe. And so we did run some water, the homeowner and I, and this thing is flowing. It's just not flowing super well. So one of the things we're gonna do here is we're gonna clean it out. The other thing we have going on is we have a sump pump in the basement and they put this like, I guess it's like a catch basin right here and it's the water is supposed to come out of the sump pump and then go down in there and then flow. The problem is this is back grading right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pipe and take it directly into the schedule 30 right here somewhere. The homeowner's got this piece of corrugated so the sump pump like discharges out but we want to get it out to the street. The homeowner has reported back that when it rains really, really hard, the water just like erupts out of this catch basin right here. And so I'm pretty sure it's back grading. When we ran the water in it to test it, this filled up a little bit more and it, it did flow to the street, but we're gonna take this whole thing out of here and just put it straight, glue it straight into our, our pump. So that should solve that problem. And then before they put this corrugated on here, the water was just getting pumped out and then going back in and getting pumped out again. So it was just in a cycle. So that'll solve all that. And then in the back here, let me show you what we've got going on. So we have this patio that is, it, it kind of floods on the far side over here. This one here does flow, so we're gonna clean that one out. But what we're going to do is we're going to add a pipe and catch this downspout. And so the major issue we have here is there's really no good place to take the water to. Let's just take a look at the run from the corner here to the back. There's really no good place to take this to. And then there's another property right back behind the fence. And so I don't know, the grade often doesn't show up on the camera, but I don't know if you all can see this or not. But if we bury a pipe, we're gonna be four, six inches in the ground and there's just no, no way we can get that fall back if we go down. So I think that run to the front is gonna be the ticket. And so I was out here a couple years ago when they were having some big problems and there just isn't a good place to take, take the water to. And so they were working on some other projects at that time. And then we're, we're back over here now. After a couple years, they're ready to do this project. And so I think the best way to go here is to take this water in an above ground pipe. We're gonna have to be above this dryer vent, which is kind of annoying, but that'll work to give us some fall across here and through the fence and i think we should have enough room to take it to the, the street out there the other thing that they had is there was a, a huge tree right there and so now that, that tree's gone that's going to give us a pretty good run to the front i'll meet you back around the front here okay around the front here we've got one and then two, that doesn't really have a whole lot of roof that it's catching, but since we're gonna be right here with the pipe, we're gonna go ahead and catch that. And then we're gonna send it to the street and core the curb. So we're gonna have to really, really mind our fall here, but I think we'll be able to get it. So if I go out here and stand on the street, you can, kind of feel like you've got a little bit more fall here. It's just, it's gonna be really, really tricky though. So that's what we're working on today. I wanted to show you all, all this mosquito habitat we're about to ruin. Oh, there oh nice. There it is. I yep. love it, look at all that. Yep. Look at all that water still coming. Nice. 
Isn't it weird how it holds like that? I know, right? And it's it like keeps draining. Extra capacity for all of those uh, <laughs> mosquito larvae you want to raise. Yep. It's great stuff. Great stuff for contributing to the environment. Yep. And you know, it's, you, you do that, you give some of your blood, <laughs> maybe host a disease organism. There you go. You know, good stuff. Plasmodium has rights too, right? Yep. Like all life, it tries to live. All right. All right. I assume we're tossing that. What's that? Ultimately. The corrugated? Yeah, we'll probably. I mean, we can leave it here, I guess. No, it don't matter to me. She has no idea where this goes. Uh, at the moment, nowhere. Yep. <laughs> Kind of dull blades work well on this because it doesn't catch as hard. There you go. Thank you. Sweat me. Oh, that you don't have a square around. Mm -hmm. That way you can do a clean out. Yep. I've got one in the truck, so maybe I'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay, over here on the fence, I think we're going to go right above this 2x4 here. So I'm going to go ahead and get that cut. This is a 4.5 inch hole saw, which is the exact outer diameter of our pipe here. bit too tight. Let me try to wallow it out a little bit before it's okay, you... It's okay. No, hang on. No, no, no. All I gotta do is push it. Push it. Oh, okay. I just had to get it where it wouldn't fall out. Okay. Oh, I did it. Besides. All right. Yeah, leave it there for now, I think. Okay. Tighter the better. Yep. Sweet. Right. All right, come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. Whoop. Good. Good. All right, we got this above ground pipe on here. And it doesn't look great, but we have achieved a ton of fall here. And this this one gutter, look at this thing. It's coming up here and it's getting like 
well over half the house, well over a quarter I'd say. And so getting this gutter out of here and like completely taken care of was a big deal. So even though this doesn't look great, it's gonna work really, really well. Nope. Seen the water? Uh-uh. Because I haven't tested enough. That's just cracked. You can see the water. So it's not doing too well. Yeah, so I don't know. There you go. Check out this connection that they did. Check out this connection that they did. So it was definitely better than nothing, but this corrugated pipe is holding a bunch of water in here. And she said it just kind of like overflows right here, so it's not helping anything. So we're gonna get this all out of here. Ooh, before you do that, you can actually see the sediment all accumulated. And just so that everybody knows, you can see the cobweb, so there's no <laughs> way we've adjusted that. Oh wow. But you can see all that. Yeah, that thing is clogged. Nice. All right. Over here in this landscaped bed, we're gonna stay high with our pipes because they can always come back in here and put some pine needles or whatever and hide the pipes. But we've got to get some fall going here if this thing is gonna work right. All right, so you see how on this side, look in the dupe finder there. You see how this side is all brick? Mm -hmm. That's, there's nothing, there's no content there. So I would move it to where you have like, maybe the edge here. Ah, oh, there you go. So now you see that we still have some brick, but now we have whatever else might be going on here. I got you, I got you. It frames it a little bit better. Yep, all maybe, right. Maybe not quite that much, but. That right actually there. puts you in the center, yeah. or just off center. Yeah. Okay. But that, those are the kind of things I think about, because a lot of times when I'm reviewing it i'm like man because like the sky will there'll be like this much sky and this much what i'm looking at and i'm like i should have lowered know, it just it down yeah. yeah yeah so let for, me see that again sure for i'll be honest for a second i thought you were talking to the audience when you said that about the oh, yeah. i was like that's why i was like oh he's talking to me <laughs> well you never know yeah So yeah, let go. I'm not touching it. Okay, yeah, I think it's gonna, I think that's it. I think that's it. Sweet. Sweet. Well, does it need to come over a little? I only ask because it's a short enough piece, it's gonna be stiff. Does it need to? Yeah, I would, here, let me, um... Yeah, it needs to go that way a little bit. This way? Okay, which means it's actually going to need to go that way. Okay. okay. Because that now puts it there. Which looks good. Okay, but what about that side? Is that side where you want it? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. cool. So, here's where we're burying it? Yep. All right. Cool. So, of course, I moved this in the way. Of course, I did. All right, we got our pipe laid out and marked. So now we just need to trench it. And we got to be real, real careful here not to go too deep with the trencher because we got to land over here. We've got a fixed point.
anytime we're going to be trenching near a ground up stump, which in this case we went right across it, I always bring the excavator and this six inch trenching bucket. So the trencher wasn't really able to get through here. So I'm hoping that I can get through here with the excavator and the, the stump is not too, too shallow below the surface. So we're, we're not there yet. We are having a terrible time with this stump, like we always do. So Jeremy's been crushing it with the ax hey. and we're gonna try this thing. So we've had varying levels of success with the sawzall blade and the pruning thing, but let's give it a try. It's not the rocks, it's the roots. If it's not the roots, it's the rocks. If it's not the rocks or the roots, it's the roots and the rocks. Yep. <laughs> All right. Springy too. Yeah. So I'm hoping that that's pretty much. These sawzall blades just do not work on roots. And I got out the chainsaw now. The chainsaw works really, really well until you hit a rock and then it trashes the, the chain instantly. So we did get a little bit cut out. You want me to try hitting it with the excavator? Uh, yeah, it's fine. You're really videoing <laughs> Oh yes. Got it done yet? Sean cut the fork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't afford that quality right there. Just get everything else. <laughs> There's the bouncing. Uh huh.
You want me to cut a little more? That's low enough. If not, you're gonna have to whack it again. All right, Jeremy, let's see how we did. All right. I don't know, you get it too damn low and then the water's going back on the side of the damn gutter. Yep. Oh my God, look at that. Under the ground too. And we got a full bubble. Yep. It's because you're high as an elephant's ass back there. Hey, as long as it drains, we're good. <laughs> Alright. I was very interested in physical science and any math. You give me math. Oh. Oh. No, I need Mr. Graves to teach me. He was Diddy's damn principal. That's it. Like 150 years ago. This man was older than dirt, but that fucker could teach you math. Okay, it was quite a struggle, especially through here where this stump was ground out of here, but we finally got our pipe in and we got it falling the way we want it. It's falling really good. We stayed above ground up here and it's pretty much flattening out and we barely have any fall through here. And then once we get about right there, it's going down again pretty good. So sometimes all you need is barely. Okay, we got everything in place, got everything covered up, and we should be in really good shape for this side of the house. So I did want to talk a little bit about what we're doing here. We're leaving this above ground because we needed to create some fall here because this property is so, so flat. And the other thing I wanted to mention is when you have a rectangular downspout going into a ground coupler, you have a pretty big space right here. And I like to leave that space because it lets me get a hose in there. It lets me get a hose in there if I ever need it. And actually, let's let's demonstrate that real quick. So take a look right there. There it goes. All right. So if I ever need to access this pipe, I can stick that hose in there. Right, I keep the 
Alright, it came through. Okay. There you go, turn it off. <clears throat> okay, the other way you can do this is you can use one of these adapters. And I don't like these in these because it seals everything. You can't fit anything in between there. And so you may think it looks better, and they make these in white as well, to have it completely sealed, but I won't install these adapters for that very reason. So if you don't like the looks of this, we can plant a bush or something in front of it. The point is, it's a lot more functional to be able to access the system if you need to. Over here at this sump pump discharge line, I think what I want to do is I think I want to pipe it in to this right here and then have a clean out here. That'll also vent it too. I like that idea because this, this run is so flat across here. I like the idea of being able to, to access it. And this is an inch and a quarter sump pump discharge line here. So I've got an inch and a quarter to inch and a half bushing and that will take it to the standard inch and a half. So that one bushing right there saved me. Okay, I think that's gonna work. Okay, what I've done here is I've piped this directly, all glued, all sealed, into this pipe here. And I've also given a clean out here, vented clean out. So I'll be able to access this system if I ever need to clean it out. And this is already in, have, has been in place and working for a long time. So I think, I think it's doing okay. But we're gonna clean it out tomorrow. It's getting kind of late today. And I may actually use this clean out for tomorrow too. So that is all now sealed together. Whatever they had going on before, where this like dumped in the catch basin and then hopefully it ran away is not gonna happen anymore. This also is sealed now so it shouldn't be backing up and overflowing like it was before. All right, we are all finished for today. We did not get to getting the existing Schedule 30 cleaned out. So it's getting pretty late in the day, so we're gonna be back in the morning with our jetter hose and our pressure washer. I'm back out here, it's the next day, and I've got my pressure washer with my jetter hose, and I'm gonna to try to get this cleaned out. So I already went in from the downspout over there, and now I wanna pull this clean out and get going from here too.
out here at the curb, we do have a little bit of water coming through here. So I'm hoping to get a better flow than that. I gotta come in from this side though, because they used regular standard tees instead of sanitary tees. So it's hard to get the sewer jet or the hose to get a, go in the right to go the right way. See this? That's a standard T instead of a sanitary T. All right, I've got my jetter hose laid out here, and it will definitely reach the entire length here from the street. So I'm going to go in from the street and see how we do. Pretty much that whole, I think it's 75 feet in there. So let's go see how, where we're at. Why would there be water here? Hmm. Okay, I showed you yesterday these adapters and they don't let you access the system. So let me show you what you have to do to get in there. You have to go in through the top of the downspout. So that's, that's why I don't use those adapters. You all think they look better. I think they work a lot worse. So that's why I don't use them. So let me climb up this ladder here with a jetter. Well, that was a disaster. I guess I'm gonna have to take apart this connector here. Not only do these awful adapters seal the system to where you can't get in it, but they also represent an obstruction to debris flowing through there. So let me see if I can find some footage from where they clog up really bad. They're just a bad idea. I know they look better, but they're a bad idea. Just don't use them. Okay, I just finished cleaning everything out and the water's flowing really, really well now. But there is one troubling thing. Take a look over here. There's a ton of water coming from somewhere right through here. And I don't know if it's just my sprayer that's, that's leaking or it seems like there's too much water here. So I wonder if one of these connections is maybe leaking. Oh, you know what? Look at that. That connection is leaking right there. That... I wonder if that pipe is full right there. 
that it's leaking out like that. But that thing, if she has any more problems, the next step would be to dig this up and take that thing apart. All right, we are finished with this job. So we got these three gutters caught and the homeowners are gonna do some kind of landscaping or something here to help hide the pipes. And then in the back here, we got an above ground pipe. And since we didn't have any fall going across here, we had to stay high to create some fall. And so we're heading down to the street right there this existing schedule 30 system though something's going on here there's a, there's a clog down here somewhere I would guess near the, where this tree was but this is probably the the first connection and that's a mechanical connection there and the water is leaking out of there so we have water coming up through here now I did get it flowing a little bit better <clears throat> but we'll have to see if if it's gonna work or not because we may have to get into this pipe and replace part of it. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I brought my sewer snake back out here to see if I could do anything with this pipe. Now there's a chance we could have to replace it, but check out what just popped out of it. So I ran the sewer snake through there and that water root just came out. And so I'm hoping that that might be it. I turned the water off and I don't like how it's still flowing so I'm not sure if there might be something else in there or what but that's what came out of it so it looks like there's still a constriction there somewhere so we might have to replace this pipe I'm back out here at this job. It's been probably a couple months or so, and we got some pretty good rain coming down. And this thing is really flowing. Look at that. So that's all water that was landing in the back by the patio with nowhere to go. And I wanted to check on the one that we cleaned out and see if that was flowing. So that one's flowing pretty good too. Look at that. And I guess the question we still have here is, is this cleaned out enough that it's going to keep up? So we may be at some point replacing that run of pipe, but the homeowner and I are kind of keeping an eye on it. So yeah, that's been working really well. I'm back out here where we did this drainage work and the homeowner had started filling this in here. And I guess I didn't tell them that I could do this grading work, so they ordered some compost and it's the wrong stuff so it rained the other day and it, if you notice the water just goes right through this stuff and so that's why you don't want to put organic matter up against the house you always want to put soil with a high clay content so i've got some soil here with me subsoil and i'm going to move all this back to the back i guess so i just want to reposition it for later usage this is good stuff but this is more like topsoil the homeowners called me back shortly after we had finished the work over here and I guess it had just poured and they had put some tarps over this and it just turned into a gigantic mess. And I guess I didn't tell them that I could bring in soil. I just talked about, yeah, the pipes are gonna be above ground and you can put some dirt in over top of them. And so I'll take the blame for not letting them know very clearly that I could have done this work. And so they had this dirt brought in and I'm not sure who brought it in, but it's, it's basically topsoil. It's, it's high organic matter. And whoever dumped this really should have known better and told the homeowner, don't, you don't want to do this. But the guy came and dumped it anyway. And so there wasn't really a good place to put the, the topsoil. And so I ended up just piling it here on the driveway and they're going to do some raised beds, I guess, in the springtime. But I did zip over there to get this all cleaned up and then I brought in some soil with a high clay content to get this grade correct against the house. I wanted to show you really quickly, I've got all the mulch dug out of here and we're pretty much down to subsoil now. There may be a little bit of mulch left in there but the more you can get out the better. The reason is this dirt 
if you place it on dirt here it will form it'll eventually form a waterproof barrier if you just pile the dirt on the mulch there'll still be a, a dissimilar material there that water could travel along so it's really important to get this mulch out of here and get our soil with a high clay content in here Okay, this is looking pretty good, and this is a little bit extreme, but they had water coming through right here under the crawl space, and they've had like rivers flowing across there. So I really wanna build this up and shed that water away from the foundation. So let me hit a little bit more right here. All right, I pretty much got this where I want it. I've gotta come over here and cut this downspout off, and so I left myself a little pile of dirt to fill that hole in, and then I'm just gonna run a pipe across here. I don't think there's a huge amount of water coming from that one downspout right there. So I guess we could potentially tie it in there, but I don't think it's that much according to the homeowners. So I've got to do this side over here, but everything's really, really wet and heavy and it's getting late in the day. And so I thought about dumping the dirt and leaving it for the homeowner, but I think I like this loading it with the or unloading it with the mini and not making a big pile somewhere so I hate to leave it like this but I kind of am trying to squeeze this in and get it done for them so yeah that's where I'm at I'm under the crawl space here in this house and look at this it looks like they painted all the joists and the flooring under here look at that I wonder if they knew there was moisture under here, it's weird. But I'm gonna go crawl around in here and see how it looks. Everything looks really good under here. And so, there is evidence of muddy water staining this plastic. But she said it's only happened once on this side. So it may be that front gutter backing up. So we may need to replace that front schedule 30 I'm back out here to check on this. It's been about four months, I guess. And I just talked to the homeowners and they said they haven't had any more problems out here. And they got some of the landscaping done. So check out how nice that looks. And this other side, I didn't get a chance to film it because I was hustling really hard to try to get it all done before the rains came and it was close to the holidays and all this and that. So look at how good this looks now. And then I did want to show you too, there was a clean out here. So I installed this little lid. So there you can see it right there. And so when I was digging out the organic debris in here, I found that. And so you gotta, you gotta leave access for it. So I had to run, or the, actually the homeowners ran to the store and got that little riser thingy. So yeah, this is looking really good. And they said they haven't had any problems. So there it is. It just rained this morning and this is still flowing really well. And the other one is flowing well too. And so 
like I was talking about before, we're keeping an eye on this one. And if it stops flowing or whatever, we may have to dig this up, this up again and replace it. But for now, it's good. So that's what matters. This was definitely an interesting project. And the main problem we had was achieving fall from the backyard there. When I first went out there to look at the property, there just wasn't a good place to take the water to. We were, we were talking about taking it to the back, but that would mean that water would still be a problem, either for the, for the homeowner or for the neighbors. And so fast forward a couple years, they, were, they got some other stuff done at the house. They were ready to get the drainage stuff done and they had taken out that tree in the front. And so that changed everything. And so that, that meant that we could go to the front. And when, when I was talking with the homeowners, I was telling them, them that we needed to go high in the back and have that above ground pipe, as you saw. And I said, it's going to look bad. And pretty much they said, we don't care what it looks like. If it solves the flooding problems, then do it. And so I've run into that before where if you think the pipe looks bad, then you've never experienced flooding problems. The homeowners love the way the pipe looks because they know that it's solving their problems. And so, like I say a lot on this channel, looks can, looks can be mitigated. So you, you can't fake the results, but you can fake the looks. And so that's what we did there. We, we, we kept that pipe really high on the front and we packed in some dirt. The homeowners went in there with some mulch and some landscaping and made everything look really, really good. And so the main thing is that the pipes are working correctly. And remember, I consider the pipes installed correctly when I can text the homeowners back. It's been four and a half months and say, how's everything been going? And they say, everything's been fine. And when I go back out there and during the rain and there's water flowing out of the pipes. So that's when I consider the pipe installed correctly. Anything else looks wise, we can fix that, make it look better. And so this was definitely an interesting one. We're keeping an eye on the schedule 30 on the right side of the house to make sure that that's going to continue to flow the sump pump thing that thing hasn't even been coming on so that like that is just good to go now and so as long as that schedule 30 is still flowing okay then that should be fine like i mentioned the next step if that is clogged up or if it is backing up like it used to the next step would be to, to dig that schedule 30 up and just replace it with glued together joints so this was definitely a really cool project and the homeowner is also scuba dive and you all know that i scuba dive and so I spent a lot of time out there talking about them or talking to them about scuba diving and places that we've gone. So that was definitely a cool project. And I hope you've enjoyed this project and thanks for watching. I hope you all have enjoyed this video and you can support the channel. You know what to do here. I also have links in the description if you'd like to become a channel member, give me a super thanks, become a Patreon or buy me a coffee. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one.